Okay, so the goal today is to put in um, a motion detector light, but as you can see, I've got a lot of them because I'm trying to daisy chain them together. So lots of people are able to put up a motion detector light, that's not a problem, but it's when you put all four of them in a row that it creates an issue on how you put them together. So this video is just gonna cover that piece of the puzzle. You can tell that one of these is not like the rest of them. And so we've had a real problem with this master slave here. You can see when I turn on the light, boom, they come on. I've got lights and they all came on at the same time. You'll notice that they just, when one comes on, they all come on. And so it's how you wire these together that becomes important. And so um, I've had a real struggle with this front master light the other three are slaves, and uh, we'll kind of walk through and explain why it's been a problem. Um, you really can't leave these lights with wires disconnected. Either you connect them, or you leave them alone and they're a master. And so, um, if we come back over here and we open this guy, I'll kind of give you a little bit idea from just the instruction guide, right? So. If we open up the instruction guide and we look on page three in here, it says wiring options. You can either do the light as a single, you can do it where there's a, a master and a slave, or you do it where they're all slaves. This one only works if you ran a three wire in there, a white, a black, and a red because you need to wire all the reds together in order for any one light to be a master signaling the others to turn on. And so if you only have a white and a black wire, if you're only running two wire, then this is not an option. You can't have master to master. You have to have master to slave. And in order to run master to slave, then you have to make sure that when you run master to slave that all your wires are connected. Okay, so I have it out of the box, right? I'll have to get a light bulb in it, but um, I'm just gonna untwist the knobs on the front of this so I can get the face plate off. So you can see the wiring. So I've got the two little knobs. Don't lose these. Make sure you put them in your pocket because you can't get it back on if you do. And get this out of the way. So pretty straightforward, especially if you're only running one wire, right? So if you're only running one wire, then you have your ground which is this copper wire I'm taking off here first. And then you have a black wire and you have a white wire. And they come pre-trimmed, so not very long trimming, but nonetheless, you hook black to black, white to white, and you're up and running. You don't do anything with the red because the red is, is in this case simply the motion detector. You're passing power from the black line into the motion detector it's sensing that there's motion, the light turns on. If, however, you're slaving them together like I am so that you can have one master and then you come back and it goes to an, a, a slave and a slave and a slave, well, then you have to use this red wire here. And so what you have to do is you have to cut this red wire off and then you have to travel. You have to have a traveler. That's why I was saying between a two wire and a three wire, you have to determine um, what you have. And so as I come up here and take a look, I'm gonna set that down. As you can see up here, I've got a black and a white, that's it. It's a, it's a two wire, 12 gauge. So I've got power coming in and neutral returning. That power is coming down and is connecting black to black, which is right here and then white to white returns. I have my ground connected. And this red guy right here, because I have slaves down the line, I have to connect the red to the traveling black, right? So this red line right here gets connected and down the wire and then boom. In each one of these, as you get down there, you'll have one white and one black coming in from the traveling you'll have a white and a black and a red from the lamp, and then you'll have a white and a black traveling to the next one. And so you put white to white, that's easy. 
ground to ground, that's easy. And then you take the traveling in black, the traveling out black, the black from the lamp, and the red from the lamp. Four wires, and you wire them all together, right? So I'm gonna change this one around and make, um, because this light obviously is the white light, and I've been having a problem trying to get this black lamp to work because I, I keep on getting a dead one. And they were saying at the at, when I called the um, office or the manufacturer, they said, well, you can get dead ones. And what you need to do is look at this code right here on the bottom of the box. This code right here tells you when the manufacturing run was. And so if you get boxes that have the same number or different numbers on the bottom of the box, then you'll know whether or not they came from the same pallet. And if one lamp is bad, you probably have several lamps that are gonna be bad. So anyway, the goal now is just to try and see if this one can work as a standalone. So I'm not gonna hook the red light up to it. I just wanna see if the bloody thing will turn on. And if it does turn on, then I'll cut the red, trim it, and send it down the traveling line. So up next is just hooking up the black and white and seeing if I get light or not. Okay. Okay, so we have again, white and black. I'm not gonna mess with the traveler yet. And this down. I just wanna make sure this light works before I send it anywhere else. So we're gonna kill the light. Now, typically you'd go out, make sure it's in focus. Typically you'd go out and make sure that the, the light is off at the breaker, blah, 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 blah. But we're not gonna do that because I've already taken this down several times and I know that the red is up on top, the black is hot, which is coming in here on the bottom, black bottom, in my case. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna undo, so that comes over here, I can take that off and then I'm gonna take this one off. My hands are tired of doing this 900 times. I'm gonna put those in my pocket. And now I'm gonna take this one and technically it should fire up. There's no reason it shouldn't fire up. So we're not gonna worry about the traveler right now. So therefore we're just gonna take the bottom, which is black. We're gonna wrap it around and then we're gonna wire nut it. Give it a little tug, make sure it's good. Grab another wire nut out of my pocket. We're gonna hook up the ground make sure it's good and again i'm not going to mess with the red one because for all intents and purposes this is a standalone motion detector light i'm not having to travel anywhere i just want to see if it's going to work okay turn on should turn on the light so you can see that it it clearly came on which is good we can shut it off turn it back on it's in test mode, so it's firing up. So now I'm just gonna take the red traveler out of the back. I'm gonna cut the red traveler, hook it up to that black traveler, and the rest of these lights should turn on. So we'll do that next. Okay. Okay, so we're just gonna undo the red line. Now again, normally if this were just a single motion detector light, you wouldn't do anything here. But because this is a slave, well, this is gonna be the master. So I'm just gonna Take that, take this and strip it. Come on. Okay, so with that stripped, need one more wire net. The other one, there it is. So now with this one, I'm gonna take this one back up to the traveler and I'm gonna hook these two together. Remember, you have to wire the rest of these together. And if you only have a two wire in the wall, they have to be slaves. That's your only option. So that's good and tight. Let me double check this one. You need another thing that's for the good ground. and tight. Let me check this one one more time. That's good and tight. And I just have to do the ground. But uh, let's see if it's going to work. Turn it on. Okay. 
it worked. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish tying up the, the grounds and I'm gonna put it back on and we're done. Just remember, um, if you have only two wires going through the house, you can only do a master and a slave if you're chaining it together like we are. The only way to get masters across all of these is if you have a three wire and there's a dedicated wire connecting all the reds together. Then any of them can motion detect and turn on the other three. Most of the time, you're not gonna pre-wire those as three. You're gonna pre-wire them as two wire. And as such, you have to choose which one's your motion, which is where your power is coming in. So I have only this option for my motion. Outside of that, they're all slaves. So if you do that right, it'll work. Otherwise, you're gonna have a problem. Uh, uh. The red okay, so wire is pinched. You got a lot of wires in here. And so you got it you gotta put a little bit of pressure on it. I'm gonna grab one of my little black nuts, put some pressure on it, lock it into place. Now the other thing that I didn't mention before that you've gotta remember to do. When you're daisy chaining these things together and you have it set up as a slave, as masters and slaves, do not turn them on until you have them all wired. You don't want any open, you don't want any open wires on your way down there. So get them all wired, leave them hanging, test it, and then when they go on, then you can come back and tighten them to the house. Now, the other thing you gotta remember when you're tightening them to the house, you're gonna be putting pressure on these to make sure they fit. You're most likely gonna mess these switches up on the bottom. So make sure you pull it back to test so that when you fire it up, fire it up, that you'll know that you not something's not working because it's not in test mode. So there we go. Good luck. <laughs>